Okay, so folks, really, uh, I'm excited to see everybody on the phone today, everybody on Zoom today are getting used to it after 16 months. Uh, Zoom and Teams are just becoming a way of life right now. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a new normal. So in terms of the new normal, where are we headed today, right? So as DJ pointed out, I've spent about three decades, it's hard to imagine, but yes, three decades in the industrial world, everything from running a factory floor to being a general manager, being sales and service head. And over that time, what I've realized is that every one of us uh, industrial OEMs that I've worked with have extraordinary complexity in the processes and install base, right? Uh, you know, if you think about the install base, it's incredibly large, it's incredibly diverse. It's uh, very varied in terms of how people use the product and what they do with it. And oh, by the way, while you're at it, there's anywhere from six to eight different people from the OEM who touch the customer, touch the asset, and then in turn, wind up interacting with another four to five different personas on the customer side. You know, suffice to say, there's a huge amount of complexity in this situation. And un untangling the complexity has been probably one of the biggest challenges that we've taken on for the last many years. And when you start looking at this complexity, and you've all, we've all dealt with this, right? It's an extraordinary cost to the OEM, right? Our estimate is today, there's about a quarter of an OEM's uh, workforce has some uh, something to do with a customer whether it's purely customer facing like sales and service or customer service or in the background, but customer related like, you know, product and marketing or even uh, logistics and other things that people who look for, uh, look for certain information and again and again. And what we found is that our customers tell us all the time that, uh, you know, typically most people wind up spending 10, 15, 20% of the time just literally refining, revalidating and reanalyzing exactly the same data everybody uses. Uh, this is a crazy problem, and we've seen this now so many times that we've really made it our mission to go solve this thing, right? So as we've gone along, we, as we started solving these different problems, we thought, you know what, let's go ahead and start understanding what the user base, what each of you really are trying to prioritize. So what we'd like to do is, you know, I want to run a short survey here, a short, short poll out here. So DJ, if you don't mind triggering the poll, that'd be great. Uh, and in this poll, you're going to get a series of choices to understand how you guys are prioritizing things. So please go ahead and vote, because as you guys are voting for it, I'm going to share with you uh, what we see in the market today as well. So we, while we're doing this poll out here, uh, we also had done a, our own survey we, where we went and uh, talked to, I don't know, a few hundred people, uh, and we started uh, listening to what they have to do. And when you start looking at what customers are telling us today, there's basically five different buckets in which they said there are major themes, major trends that are impacting the industry, right? So the whole digital notion, digital business, the commerce side of it is a big deal. The data asset as a big deal. The servitization or equipment as a service or product as a service is emerging. It's not as fast as people thought it would be. And you know what's, what's surprising but not surprising at the same time is an extraordinary number of OEMs are saying, Listen, this whole thing about generational change or where uh, people who've been tenured in these industries for 20, 25, 30, 40 years, people uh, you know, are, are now retiring. And along with their retirements, they're taking knowledge away with them. And as the next generation of technical people come in, as the next generation of management comes in, you know, it's really hard to make the transfer happen easily. And that's really a big, big deal for most companies that we talk to. And then finally, the big trends for the last few years, the whole notion of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, trying to make all these things work, the analytics, and then of course, IIoT, which is a promise that's been a long time uh, in, in, the, in, in development. So these are the kinds of things we're seeing. Uh, we have our perspective on what people are prioritizing, but we thought maybe uh, we'd love to get a sense from you as to how things are. So DJ, if you don't mind stopping the poll, I'd love for yep, all I'll of us that. to see, I'd love for all uh, of us to see how people are prioritizing. Go ahead. Uh, Vivek, you do have a uh, that little window, uh, on on the left side, yep, you'd probably have okay. to move that. I'm not right. entirely sure what that is. Uh, yep, perfect, thank you. So I'm going to end the poll. I think we had about 70, 60, 70% uh, response and the results should be on the screen at the moment. Okay, so interesting. So when I look at this information, about a third, 40% of focusing on servitization 41% analytics in AML and the rest of the e-commerce. It's a fascinating, uh, fascinating distribution. I'm going to close this uh, screen because for me, it's going to uh, obscure the views you had. So what's actually surprising to us is that while people talk about analytics and AI and ML, the development has been mostly around things like business intelligence uh, as much as anything else. 
the AI ML people are beginning to dabble into it. And it's really not as widespread as we see when we did our own survey. So maybe at this point, Anup, if you don't mind just popping into the chat box, we'd like to continue more data on our survey that we're running separately. So Anup's gonna pop into the, into the survey, into the chat box, a link where those of you who are so inclined can go ahead and uh, help us uh, add more to it. So it is good to see the fact that there's focus on uh, analytics and AML, servitization and digitization. And you know uh, we'll, we'll be able to make these results, uh, we'll be able to share these results with you at the conclusion of the survey. So thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, sharing that information with us. So when I think about what's going on here, right? there's a whole tension, if you may, between the technology that's been developed, the technology that's developing, the legacies uh, that we all, legacy and heritage technology we all deal with, and uh, the human forces, you know, be change management, be these generational changes going on. All these activities are really creating extraordinary stresses on you, the OEM. And with that in mind, you know, we started saying, okay, so what do we do about this, right? So we've shared this with many of you before. We've talked about Entitled's install-based data platform as really the vehicle for the modern OEM. And you know, we, we purposely chosen the, the phrase of modern OEM because for those of us who come from manufacturing environments and all the legacy systems we dealt with, the, the future to go back to the survey results with AI ML, with uh, uh, you know, uh, servitization or e-commerce, it's gonna require a completely different way of thinking as you go forward. And the platforms of the past aren't gonna be the ones for the platforms for tomorrow. And so we've thought about this a lot. We've built this solution in a systematic manner and as you can see, this picture is what you've seen. And uh, those of you who work with us know that is that's how we kind of come to uh, come to kind of deploy the technologies and deploy the solutions out there. And so in the context of what this set up for today's user conferences, you know, our belief is really what we want to become for you is be the quote unquote, the operating platform, if you may, for your install base. There's so many activities that we saw on the first page that so many touch points, so many personas, so many things. We want you to be able to manage and run that entire thing from one place. And that's us in Dial, right? And so the ability for us to make those workflows easy for you and make them faster and more efficient is really a core organizing mission, if you may, for us, right? So that's how we thought about it. There's a lot of words you'll see on the top part of the stack in terms of the descriptions, the attributes of what this data platform means to you. And we want to make sure we start sharing some of that information. If you've not really done this, uh, very often in the past, but we want to share this information with you in terms of our vision, our mission, and therefore the value proposition, the value you guys are going to get out of it. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Rob. Uh, and Rob, maybe you want to kick this off with this uh, little survey, uh, or, or a little uh, quiz here? Sure. First, so uh, uh, good to see everybody here today. Um, we have a, to keep things lively, uh, there are two cities pictured here and whoever can uh, guess those first and put them in the chat bar, uh, we will send you a uh, $25 gift card. You wanna go to the next slide? All right, so um, we're gonna talk about kind of the roadmap in uh, two dimensions. Uh, some things that have recently uh, been implemented and rolled out and uh, what's coming up over the next uh, two quarters. So looking back over the last two quarters, some things you may or may not be aware of, Q1, the focus was really on visibility and reliability. Uh, how do we make uh, the data uh, more accessible and uh, create that greater visibility? And then as our customer base has grown and uh, the number of assets and locations has increased, you know, we've had to focus investments on performance and scale. Uh, in the second quarter, uh, the focus has been on uh, proactive selling and driving loyalty. So helping our manufacturers be more proactive and drive loyalty through analytics, as well as uh, increased uh, visibility and accessibility to data. Next. So the first uh, thing that happened uh, at the very beginning of the year was uh, Customer Central 360. Uh, so this is based on feedback from you in terms of uh, how do you get all the information regarding a customer or a customer location uh, in one place? How do we get uh, the, the basic uh, details around that customer location? How do we get the equipment, the transactions, 
Uh, how do we get the trends of parts and services? And then how do we get some of the insights like propensity to buy all in one place, uh, easily accessible? Next. And then secondly, is looking at uh, accounts. So another uh, you know, focus of making all of the install base data flatter and more accessible. So things that might have taken four or five clicks to get to uh, in the past, uh, making that easily accessible with fewer clicks. And so this is looking at that account level aggregation, uh, making it easy to get there uh, through an intuitive interface. Next. And then what has recently gone live in Q2, and uh, you know we're working with each of our customers individually in terms of how does it get implemented and used in, in your process is our customer loyalty manager. And this is using the data and using artificial intelligence to identify potentially at-risk customers, gain insights around those, and really use that to focus your resources. So first it's surfacing those irregular customers that uh, aftermarket spend has has had challenges classifying them based on loyalty and then using that to uh, target campaigns at them. So I'm going to do a quick demo of customer loyalty manager. When you first log in and you have customer loyalty manager enabled, it's going to show up on the right hand side of the home screen. There's two visualizations at a high level. First, the activity index by locations, ranging from needs attention, segmented all the way to healthy. And then on the bottom, that same breakdown with the regional component added. So if I were at the executive level, we'd be able to get a quick snapshot as to how my customers are breaking down in terms of the activity index. If I were a regional VP of sales, say I ran the Southern region, I could quickly Go in here and see that I have 111 locations that need attention. Quickly drill into those. And then I can take a couple different uh, courses of action from here. First, uh, I could actually just create a pipeline uh, like I would for uh, other opportunities within Insights and essentially assign those 111 locations to their specific owners, create opportunities, and then track the action against those. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to look at the uh, largest of these. Uh, and so we can see here uh, the sorted by five year revenue. I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to take a look here at Quinex Communications. And we can see the two different pieces of the activity index regularity, which is essentially how regular does that customer transact with us, and monetary index. What is the uh, revenue level of that customer normalized by the equipment that they own. And so I can quickly drill in and see that Connects at Deer Park, uh, both parts and service have dropped off. While this customer is not a huge customer, it has significantly fallen off and, you know, could be an opportunity to engage with them to figure out how can we make them a, a more loyal customer, get them more engaged. So we can quickly drill in, we can see the equipment they own, we can see their parts transactions. We can see that they historically bought a lot of lamps, but that really fell off in October 2019. Why did that happen? We can see they had a pretty robust uh, service engagement with us. That also fell off in March of, of 2019. So this is really the starting point for the account owner to drill in to understand why is Kinex uh, less loyal for us and what can we do to engage with them to get them back on track. If you want to learn more, figure out how Customer Loyalty Manager can work for your organization, reach out to your Customer Success Manager, and they can walk you through it and get, get things set up. All right, so I'm going to pass it back over to, to Vivek. We talked about Q1 and Q2, what has recently come out, and Vivek's going to talk us through uh, the exciting developments that are coming soon. You know, the, the interesting part about uh, being a software entrepreneur now, after having been, I don't know, 20 plus, almost like DJ said, 30 years on in the industrial side, is that the 
space or the rate of change we 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 have in our business business in terms of the development roadmaps and our releases is extraordinary. And many of you, longtime customers of ours, know that we're on a monthly release cycle, which means every I think every third or fourth Saturday of the month we wind up with a new release. Those releases could be minor in terms of fixes or some small modifications, some small upgrades, or some major releases. What you see with the customer loyalty manager was a major release. There's a couple of new things coming up, and we are still still maintaining that train, if you may. Of a, of a monthly release cycle. So there's a few things that we respond to back in the context of our executing a vision, right? One is the ability to say, listen, the data that you have in the internal platform today, you've been tethered to your desktop and we've all been in the house for the last, I don't know, 15, 16 months for the most part, not really traveling, not really doing anything. Well, you know what, it's time to set the data free. It's time to start letting you go uh, work from anywhere as it may be. So there's a whole notion of insights, mobility and accessibility that we're gonna start. So there's a series of things you see on the right-hand side of this chart that talk about insights and mobile, the personalized digest and so on and so forth. And then really the, 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 the second big move that we're making as part of this vision of letting you quote unquote manage or, or operate your install base from anywhere is the ability to share this data with multiple systems. So the notion of uh, open application programming interfaces or open APIs is a big part of our uh, execution roadmaps right now. We're going to continue enhancing some of the stuff you've been used to. We're adding build the materials capability, even more advanced than we have before. And again, the, the big thing that we see time and time again is a notion of data quality uh, underpinning this thing to make it all work right. So that's what's coming up in the next uh, few weeks and months out here. Uh, uh, some simple stuff, right? Uh, guess what? The, the, the last mile problem that every one of us faces is once you create an opportunity, once you create a pipeline, hey, who do I call, right? And this information is buried in lots of different places. And not just who do I call, but can I really make sense of this data and say, if it's Rob Brandam who I'm really trying to contact, what else is he associated with it? Do I know which systems are tied to him? Do I know what, where I've seen his information? What about this? So, so we built this notion of contacts where, quote unquote, flattening the hierarchy and bringing the contacts on the left-hand side of the menu bars you see now. You see this in, this in this screenshot. And more importantly, there'll be more richness of information in terms of contacts. So as you see this little pop-up screen there, you know, highlighted a particular name and out it pops in this particular name is associated with this equipment and at some point with these different things out there, right? So it's pretty impressive in terms of the kind of insights we can start finding even through associating all these names with one another. The, the second piece that's coming out as part of the accessibility and mobility is you've already seen some insights in terms of small email digests that come out. We're now going to start tailoring those. So, right, again, based on your role, based on the activity levels, we're going to start giving a more journey insights, if you may, in terms of what you should be doing in a territory, things that are happening, some simple distillations, if you may, about what's what you ought to be focusing on. And if you think about it, you know, every one of us is incredibly busy. And so the ability for us or the desire for us to go look at a data set, to look at information and kind of parse through it, it's just, it's just hard. And here's a way to kind of make it really, really simple for everybody to say, we're going to give real-time snapshot and kind of make it easy for you to to see what's happening. And then finally, the big thing, right? Insights mobile, it's the access from anywhere stuff, right? Uh, it's the ability to go get this information and have it accessible to your fingertips. And as you can see, this is a development that we've been quote unquote threatening people, <laughs> threatening our customers for a long time. You know, guess what? When it became clear that the vaccines are here, people are gonna start traveling. We hastened the uh, development roadmaps and got this product up and uh, uh, developed. We're gonna release it at the end of this month. And really the ability is, as, I, as we put it, so in a cheeky manner, you know, carry your install base in your pocket, right? Uh, it's really the ability to have the uh, access to the information where you are, as, I say, as we say, where you are, there you are, right? Got that information there. And the simple integrations, like if you have something, you look at the name on the phone, you can click on the name and you have an email address or phone. You can either have the uh, API run to the phone and kind of get the phone call going or bring up your favorite email browser, or email app, and start sending this information out in terms of emails and so on and so forth. So it's really a very, very cool application that's coming out here. And just like the previous one, we're gonna do a little bit of demo. Uh, it's always good to show this thing in the form uh, that you can see how things are going on. So let me share the screen with you for a second here. Our new mobile app has been based on uh, feedback from you, our customers, uh, usage data, and an analysis of which use cases are going to provide the most value uh, in a mobile environment. So let's jump right in. So first, the map interface uh, should be familiar to 
uh, existing users of Insights. Uh, you can see here we have the map uh, with uh, customer locations. You can also look at uh, where is the equipment in my install base located uh, and even where are opportunities uh, as well as contacts and so forth. Of course, it is mobile. Uh, so we have the ability to uh, use a location feature uh, and even identify uh, locations, sites, uh, and uh, equipment and opportunities uh, that are nearby your location. You can see here I am in Northern Virginia today and the different uh, customer locations that are nearby. So to get started, I'm gonna actually look into uh, a customer location that I'm planning uh, a visit to in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so first I'll go up to the search bar and we're looking for uh, Connects Communications uh, in Laplace, Louisiana. So we can just type in Connects in Laplace and there it is, the first one. So this brings up our Location 360 view, which has a lot of the same information that you're familiar with uh, in the web version of Insights. Uh, so we have an overview. We can see details on equipment, opportunities, uh, and a whole bunch of other uh, aspects of that location. So looking at the overview, we can see that uh, that location for Connects has three pieces of equipment. Uh, they've uh, bought $7,400 worth of parts and service, so aftermarket recurring revenue over the last five years. And they have a really high propensity to buy, about 95%, and that's based on uh, AI analysis of their transaction history. We can see a bunch of location details. Uh, we can see the service contracts that they have and the status of those, we can drill into any of these. We can see some quick and dirty analytics. Uh, what is their, their parts trend? What's their service revenue trend? Uh, what types of equipment they have? So in this case, the Aquamate. And how old is that equipment? In this case, uh, six to eight years or, and 12 to 14 for two of the pieces. We can see what are the last transactions that uh, Connects in Laplace has made. And we can also see the opportunities. So if we're getting ready to visit them and we want to know what are the different types of things that we might want to bring up and or might have been brought up in the past and what's the current stage of those, what are they worth, uh, we have all of that uh, at our fingertips. And then if we wanted to uh, call Connect, so perhaps we weren't actually visiting, but uh, we just got an email uh, about reaching out to Connects and we're sitting uh, at your kid's softball game, uh, you can easily pull this up, see the opportunities, see who the contacts are, uh, and even click right here uh, to make the call using the, the click to call feature. So many of you are probably also familiar <clears throat> with uh, our new accounts feature. And so uh, the mobile app has the exact same feature. So you can see at the top, it says connects communication in blue. So you just click on that. And now it's going to take us up to the account view. So we can see that there are 14 locations for Connects. Uh, they have $109,000 in opportunities open currently. They've had $76,000 in uh, recurring revenue over the last five years. And then we can see some analytics uh, at the account level. So account revenue trend, uh, which locations have had the most revenue. So we can see, uh, you know, in the past, uh, it was the Deer Park location in 17 and 18 that had the most. And then in 19, uh, it became the Linden location. Uh, and you can go from there. You can also see same kind of summary uh, details, equipment, uh, opportunities, and then a whole bunch of other uh, aspects related to that account. Excellent. Uh, that is a good, uh, that is a good demo. So I'm going to switch over a couple more slides here. So you know, there's a few questions availability. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be released the end of uh, end of September, so it's about three four weeks away from now. Price, it's uh, free for all our users right now. It's just a simple uh, extension to what we do today. Uh, early access, uh, I think uh, we're going to start giving early access to some of our customers who are anxious to try it out. Uh, and I think Anoop or one of our colleagues is going to put a little link out there if you guys want to go, uh, kind of register for early access. Uh, we want to get you guys the app as soon as we can in the next few, uh, probably week or so. And then where is it available? It's available in the App Store and uh, it will be available in the App Store and uh, 
uh, Google Play as well uh, pretty soon when we go to general release uh, in the next four weeks. So exciting. It's, it's really a great build where we're, we can't wait to put it in your hands and, uh, gets, uh, and get you guys out on the road. So when you start thinking about where we are at the title with everything you've seen today, it's really about harnessing the power of the platform, right? If there's one thing we've learned over the last many years of building the company, it's that is one thing to solve a problem as a point solution, if you may. You know, I want to go run a query on something, or I want to go build a uh, algorithm for such and such thing. But when you start pulling together and unifying the extraordinary amounts of data we do today, uh, when you start pulling in data from six, eight, nine different systems to really complete the picture, it really starts becoming the foundation of what you do. And when you start looking at these little things out there, which is build once, share anywhere, it's this whole open API thing, you know, build your own workflows and applications. We're going to introduce them probably in the first part of next year, some interesting opportunities for you users to go start own workflows. There's lots of tools out there which you're getting into a platform that start letting you build these applications, right? The whole notion of connecting your systems, be it ERP systems, be it CRMs, or service systems, you know, we have the ability to do it. And then really, if you think about the democratization of the data, you know, traditionally in an enterprise, the SAP or ERP systems or a province of just a few, Salesforce or CRMs or Dynamics, you don't make this available to everybody. And so there's always these islands of information everywhere. You know what? You don't have to lock it up anymore. It's all available. It's all accessible. It's all available to everybody and really start making this thing uh, a big deal to, to start doing it. And what that starts is if you go back to the survey results that we talked about, which you guys talked about, 41% are focusing on analytics and AI and ML, uh, about 30 something percent on e-commerce and uh, another set on data as a service, a servitization. You can't without this notion of a progressive or, or multi-generational, if you may, analytics platform. So industrial analytics or industrial organizations, right? So it's everything from the descriptive and diagnostics analytics that you see today to the predictive piece of it, which is You've seen uh, us roll this thing out multiple times in terms of multiple ideas, in terms of propensity to buy, the purchase rate stuff we have, the predictions, and then really using the data to start prescribing actions, prescribing recommendations, prescribing kits, and so on and so forth. So there's a series of things we've built and will continue to build to make the progression real. And so when you start looking at this information, how it starts progressing, how it starts building on this generation, you know, it's really about making sure we build this platform for you to do all things install base, right? So that's been our vision. That's what we've been working on. We're excited as, uh, as, as can be in terms of being able to share this with you. And really the one thing we've done for the last year, and some of you referred to this uh, in, in some of the communications we have with you, is our, our idea to put this install, the industry next family together, the community together, has been really a, a linchpin of uh, what we've been trying to build. It was very clear to us about a year and a half ago that the more we looked around, there wasn't really a forum for people like us collectively to be uh, in a place where we can meet, share ideas and, and, and swap stories in terms of how to make our businesses better, right? So that's the Industry Next family, which we started uh, over the last year. Many of you have attended this, uh, the different events. You know, we started about a year ago with, uh, with kickoff in September last year. Here we are in August and the, the big, next big event is September coming up soon. Uh, we've had a series of topics that are of interest to you. And as you start looking forward in terms of where we're headed, uh, the big thing is September 2021. I think the date is September 22nd. We'll get the uh, mailing out to you. It's really a focus on supply chain, right? So, you know, so, you know, you may look at this and say, hey, Vivek, what's supply chain got to do with install base? It's actually everything you guys care about, right? Uh, we've now been on the road talking to our customers and prospects and the notion of a supply chain and the, the mess of the supply chain is on right now and the pressure is putting you guys in is extraordinary. So we thought we'll get some best minds to kind of share some ideas with you. We're gonna have some pretty uh, interesting speakers. So stay tuned uh, for that event. The next uh, part was install base index in October. We're gonna start sharing some statistics, what we're seeing in terms of the behavior in the marketplace and, and so on and so forth. And then finally pricing, you know, pricing never gets out of style. We had an event in February when Leo uh, Stevens uh, gave a really good talk on pricing. We're gonna bring some other pricing ideas forward because guess what, as you guys get prepared for 2022, your pricing is gonna be the forefront of your minds coming out of the pandemic. So that's kind of where we're headed. Uh, we've built a website, we've shared that with you guys. Uh, please go in there, take a look at it. Some great content, videos, uh, you know, podcast information there. Uh, we're making this really a, a, a community for you with you, right? It's not about entitled, it's really for you guys, uh, for information and learning. And then finally, what's next? You know, we have a series of releases coming up for the next few months uh, that are gonna highlight some of the things we talked about a few minutes ago. 
Um, but really, you know, go start exploring stuff. Go help get on a website, carry this install base in your pocket as we put it. Uh, log in, kind of give us early access, uh, give us information who wants early access. And, you know, we're off and running and ready to go. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, so we really appreciate your time today. We try to keep these bite size around quote unquote lunchtime in the central and east zones, eastern time zones in the US and hopefully in the dinner hour, if you may, in Europe uh, and India. Uh, but uh, we really appreciate so many of you joining us today and uh, we're re ready to answer any questions that you may have today. So I am going to leave the screen on this, the, the, the thank you screen and then I'll look to uh, see what questions you may have. So DJ, please let us know how we are going to handle the questions. Was it through you or Anoop uh, going to be the moderator? Uh, sure, Vivek. We're just waiting for, I think some folks are having difficulties and questions. Let me just check. Okay. We did have a few people who raised their hands, but then, okay. Uh, Lalit, I think you had raised your hand a while back. Okay, we have a question from Jenna. Is the entitled phone app going to be released at the end of this month or next month? End of September, end of next month. Thank but the early access will be in the next week or so, I think. Hopefully that answers the question. Absolutely. Thank you, Jenna, for asking that question. I'm sure many of, many people had that question, but you know, uh, you're the first one to ask. So uh, by the way, while we wait for the questions uh, to happen, um, we did receive a couple of uh, uh, comments from or feedback from some of the attendees. They said the video was too grainy for them or they couldn't see. Um, uh, so what we're going to do is we'll try and make sure that you know we get a recording out to you. At the very least, we'll try and get the demo recording out to you because I think that that was the video in reference here. Uh, so there were two demos. One was the customer loyalty manager and the other one was uh, for um, the mobile itself. So we'll try and get that out uh, to you folks. Um, another question that's coming in is uh, what is required to get the app stood up or, you know, to, uh, so to set it up, uh, Vivek, do you want to take yeah. that? Yeah, sure. Great question. So, you know, uh, the, to do, do a deployment of the application that you saw in terms of uh, the desktop application, customer loyalty manager, and actually for the matter, the companion app on the, on the mobile, the fundamentals are implementation of the application that we have today, the software as a service. And the timeline we typically tell people is budget about anywhere from eight to 10 weeks. At the lower end, we've gone live in as little as six weeks. And uh, at the high end, we've gone as high as uh, some extremely large companies with extraordinary data sets. We have taken about 12 to 14 weeks. So that's why eight to 10 weeks is a pretty good benchmark time. We've generally come under that. Uh, so that's what it is. And, and part of the eight to 10 weeks is really the onboarding of the data, if you may, right? So we've got as much as 25 years plus of data from some customers and from six, seven different systems literally tens of millions of data records coming in. And so we go through an extraordinary process of reconciling the data across multiple systems, cleansing it, uh, deduplicating it, enriching it, and getting it ready for consumption in the analytics algorithms, right? So that process, I'd say, I'd say 60, 70% of the time, whether it's six to eight weeks or 10 to 12 weeks, is about the data prep. And the rest of the time is about validation, it's about training, it's user acceptance testing, it's onboarding, and so on and so forth. So you know, eight, eight weeks is a good number, eight to 10 weeks, and then we can go from there. Hopefully right. that answers your questions. I think there was another dimension to this, Vivek, probably, you know, uh, it was uh, also about the mobile app. The reference was to the mobile app. Uh, okay, a mobile app, to, yeah. So I think the mobile app is going to be, once you download it, once you sign in, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be able to give you access to that right away. As long as your credentials are authenticated, access to the data via the app should be pretty instantaneous. But you need to up, uh, app is available in the App Store and the Google Play uh, market, then you can start doing that. Perfect. We've got a question coming in from uh, Bala Kumaran. He says, will Entitled Analyzer activity in the platform and provide feed based on this? Oh, interesting. So will there be a, is it feed or feedback or feed? So will there be a feed coming from the activity levels? So the short answer, we do monitor activity levels and can start looking at things. In terms of the analytics, we do provide that. It's embedded in some of the analytics we build. Uh, will we provide a feed uh, much in the form of either social network feeds and stuff? We have to consider how we're going to do it. We may have to tweak some ideas because we have to uh, 
uh, we have to surface the right insights, the right person in the field, right? So a uh, great, great question, uh, but we'll probably make that available in the second half uh, once we start seeing the early activities and how people are using it today. So that's how, we're, that's how I interpret your question in terms of the feed in the context of the app. Hopefully that answers your question, Balakumar. In case it doesn't, please do raise your hand and uh, you know, we will open up the mic for you. Um, Did you while we're waiting for, yeah. sorry, you have a question. I was going to say, if you, if you don't have a question, uh, I was going to ask who won the contest on the quiz. Oh, oh, we need to go back and check. I think we did not okay. get two responses. Probably we should just yeah. put that screen up again and see if anybody <laughs> wants to take the quiz. Uh, but while you do that, um, I have a question from Shanoi. Paul, um, they say the supply chain add-on, would that freight pricing analytics? Probably it requires a little more context. Yeah, I was going to say quite context. So is it probably referring to the chart we showed on the right side in terms of supply chain stuff? Is that what it is? Uh, that's my guess too. But Shanoi, if you could add a little more context to the question, that'd be super helpful. The question you asked is a supply chain add-on with that freight pricing analytics. Um, but while you do that, we'll just go to the next one, which is, um, and this is anonymous. It says, can you give more details around open API? Um, yeah, so the short answer is yes. The long answer is we're going to have to uh, share that with you separately and privately because there's a systematic document we've got about open APIs, the requirements, the specifications, and so on and so forth. So we can actually have a session uh, with whoever's uh, interested in this uh, with, our, with our technical team, because we've got that ready to go and uh, we're just now uh, rolling it out. So the short right. answer is yes, but please give us your contact information. We'll be in touch with you. Perfect. And Shanoi did raise uh, their hand, plus they did uh, you know, add some context. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow Shanoi to ask the question. Sure. Shanai, go ahead. You can unmute yourselves and yeah. ask the question. Good evening, everybody. So uh, my question was, so for the pandemic, I mean, from the onset of pandemic, freets were the, freet pricing was the major challenge for the supply chain teams. So would we have, with the supply chain add-on coming in, would we have freet pricing analytics added to that? Ah, good question. So we're going to do, that's a great question. Thank you for that. So the way we're thinking about the supply chain analytics, right now it's, it's going to be focused on inventory because if you consider the data platform with pulling in all this data, we're able to start doing uh, basically demand forecasting for inventory planning much easier than anything else. As long as you start bringing in data from other uh, parts of your data set, we can then turn around and make those analytics available on freight or purchasing or whatever, right? Because we're starting to seeing all this data coming in. But the initial instanti instantiation of the supply chain piece, uh, Shanoi, was about inventory. Uh, we have not thought through the uh, freight uh, analytics yet, but presumably was the data is there, then it's easy to build that out. But our first instance is inventory. Hopefully that answers the question. Yes, thank you. Right. Okay, going back to Balakumar, uh, his question, I'll just read that again. He's provided a little more context. Uh, it said, we'll entitled analyze our activity in platform and provide feed based on this. And the context was feed like in YouTube or Facebook. Right, like so that's, uh, that's what, like a social network feed in terms of like, here's what people are doing. And, you know, so we actually had that at one point in terms of thinking through about what that feed would look for the user base. So it is a, instead of that, I think we've done a digest for now. So the hypothetical answer, or the, 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 the concept would be, if I'm a user based on my traffic and based on other traffic, can you, can you kind of populate a feed? And you know, we're doing this in the form of an email digest, but we're not thought in the context of a, a classic social network based feed yet. So mixed message, if you may, it's, it's, it's available in a different manner. I think that, and we'll have to think about it, but that's good feedback, that's a good idea. So we don't have a feed idea in our roadmap yet. All right. Um, okay. There's a question. Uh, there's, though. Absolutely. I think we have time to just take one more because we are at time. Uh, the last question is on what parameters will customer loyalty be measured? Uh, that's a great question. So it's a, it's a, it's a simple question, but it's a hard answer in the sense that we, we assess a ton of different uh, variables. It's everything from the frequency of purchases, the recency to the monetary value, and it's a combination thereof that basically starts doing it across parts and consumables and equipment and services. So there's a lot of things coming together to do the calculation. And we can share that with you in terms of how the framework is set up and the ability to tweak it to a certain degree. 
to make that law score, if you may, uh, be uh, something a bit more uh, relevant and contextual to your needs. But it's a combination of, you know, the data we see from service and parts transactions, equipment transactions, but also monetary value, recency, frequency, a little bit of consistency thrown in there, right? So a lot of different things going together. So uh, we'll, we'll have to have a bit more uh, discussion with, uh, with uh, whoever's interested in that, uh, with you on that one. All right, so uh, those folks uh, who sent in the questions um, anonymously, in case you would like to talk to us or you know discuss those questions in details, please feel free to reach out to uh, reach back to us. We do. We will be sending out a note, a thank you note to all the attendees, so you could just respond to that email, and we'll be we'll be sure to engage with you further.